Hey, how about that? <laughs> I can see myself. Um, here, we'll straighten you up a little bit here, guys. You're crooked. You must have just woke up or something. You can't see straight. Oh, maybe it's me. <laughs> hey, I tell you what. This filming thing's been pretty cool. You know, it's funny. I, um... I am not tech savvy whatsoever, period. I've had to learn everything. I'm just, uh, I'm a wood carver, you know? Uh, grew up doing construction, grew up building kitchen cabinets. Uh, started when I was eight years old. My daddy got me out in the shop with him. Been a fun ride, you know what I mean? And I'm, uh, uh, uh 66, 67 this year. And, uh, it's, uh, I just didn't learn anything to have to do with computers. My, my dad and the family, we just worked all the time trying to earn a living, trying to pay the bills, you know, just normal folk. And, uh, so I've had to learn how to use this iPhone. Well, there's so many cotton picking buttons on there and I'll be going long grade. Everything's perfect and apple sends me an update they update me and they change everything it's like really guys i just learned that <laughs> so so that's been really fun so anyway the point i was getting at here that i just learned that was cool i don't know the terminologies of a i guess they call it portrait and landscape so a friend of mine calls calls me and he says i, I like your films you're doing a great job. It would be nice if I could see more. Why don't you shoot it in landscape? And I'm going, okay, sure, yeah. Let me call you tomorrow because I don't know what the Sam Heck landscape is. So I was with some friends last night, and he's a younger guy. He deals with computers and that, and I'm going, maybe he knows the landscape and if I say something. And I said, yeah, this friend of mine told me I do, need to do it in landscape. I need to look it up. And it's like, this guy holds his phone up and he goes, Jerry, this is portrait. This is landscape. And I'm sitting there feeling like an idiot. <laughs> it's like, okay, dude, didn't know it. I appreciate it. Thank you. And so, so we're doing this, you know. And um, so I got my first lesson humiliated uh, because I should have been able to figure it out. That's pretty simple. Well, then... I'm shooting this thing, and, and I can't tell what I'm doing. I can't tell if it's filming me. I can't see myself, nothing else. And my wife goes, well, hit the button and turn it around. So the, the other day when I'm filming the cutting my lumber, I go out there and I go, I can't turn it around. The camera's on the backside. What's she talking about? So I filmed the whole thing with the camera facing me, so I don't see what y'all are seeing at all. <laughs> And so I'm out here talking to my brother, and I thought, well, I want to watch him because we're on video phone. And uh, so I pushed the button and turned around, and I can see him, he can see me. And I'm sitting there looking at it going, oh, there must be a camera in the front somewhere. Duh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is how I learned. You know, it's like one tumble after another. But that's okay. We got it. Just keep working with me, guys. <laughs> uh, what I want to do today is carving's in my heart. I love it. I want to share it. For the longest time, I didn't share it because I'm sitting there and go, well, if I teach someone, they're going to be competition. And oh my gosh, you know what? Last time I heard, there was 3,500 wood carvers in the world. And we got all these people. Like, we're really going to flood the market with wood carvers. Uh, I've taught probably 30 people personally. And they just, some of them did well. Some of them did it as a living. Some has done extremely well. Um, but I've never even seen their work. And I'm in the same country as they're in. So I don't think we're going to interfere with each other. And I did learn early in life that the more wood carvers you have in one area, the better you do. And the reason being is everybody knows you can go like to Pigeon Forge, and that's where all the wood carvers are. 
go get a wood carving. And uh, so I thought, okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I got an order, I have to do a mushroom. So I'm gonna set this up uh, the way it's supposed to be set up and everything, and we're gonna carve it. And the first thing we do, save the equipment. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because so many times uh, we kind of grow up, especially guys, you know, they think they're tough and they're bulletproof, you know? And uh, my problem growing up, of course, since I grew up in the swamps and stuff, and since I caught alligators, nobody else did. Since I caught wild pigs, I'm going, oh, I must be bulletproof and 25 feet tall, you know? And uh, I'll never forget one time I was at a thing with a bunch of youth in the dorms that we were in caught on fire. <coughs> well, the elevator quit. And of course, I'm 25 feet tall and bulletproof. And we're in a three-story building. And I think, okay, there's grass. And uh, <coughs> so I bail out, thinking that I'm Tarzan or somebody, you know. I hit that ground, buddy, it hurt so hard, it wasn't even funny. It jarred my teeth, I think. <laughs> um, so, so you know, it's, it's, safety is important. Always look for your safety. Now, I don't know how this is going to affect me, but I'm going to go ahead and put my earplugs in now. These are some fresh ones that I got, so they don't give me an ear infection. Hopefully, I can hear myself talk and I don't start screaming at you. Um, if I start screaming, just pretend you're one of my kids. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, sometimes, sometimes you, you lose it, you know. You try the best you can, and it's like, dang it. They're not listening to me. Anyway, can you imagine me never raising my voice? Might be interesting. Okay. This is our log. This is white pine. That is pretty much the wood that all wood carvers use. Um, it cracks the last, lasts a little bit longer. This one here's got a lot of knocks in it. Normally I would use it for uh, a bear coming out of stump because it's got some real pretty stuff. But we're gonna do a mushroom today and it'll probably come down to here, it looks like. So I'll do the calf, the little skirt, and then the, the, the trunk. It's like a tree, you know? Anyway. First thing we do is we nail these down. And it's funny, I, I was up in Michigan one time and I'm carving this guy come by and he goes, I want to carve so bad. He goes, will you please show me? And I mean, this poor guy, I said, oh yeah, sure, I'll show you. So I sit there and I carved out a bear. And uh, he took pictures and he filmed me some and he drew some pictures and he was real diligent. You know, this guy was really into it. And he goes, I'm going to go home and carve it. I said, no, carve it here. And he goes, no, 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 no. I don't want to do it in front of everybody. I'll go home and do it, you know. And I'm going, I can relate with this. But anyway, bring it back. So it was probably three or four hours later. And this guy comes back. And he's got a bear that's about this big. About that big around. And this thing is caked in mud and sand and dirt. And, and it's chipped all over, and the uh, ears broke off. And I'm going, dude, what'd you do with this thing? Bite it? <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, I, I, I chased that thing all over the yard trying to get it carved. I just couldn't get it sit still. <laughs> and I said, oh, really? I said, oh, watch this. So I put a stump up there, and I grabbed my three nails. I always use three nails. And I toenailed it into the, the log. And when you toenail, it's on an angle. So you hit the log and then you go into the log underneath. And uh, <laughs> he sit there and goes, oh my gosh. I didn't know you did that. I, I was wondering how you held that thing down. He goes, I chased that thing all over my yard. And I said, really? <laughs> I said, I'll go back and try to carve another one. <laughs> so, so you do have to nail them down. Like I said, you catch an edge of a piece of wood. Let's move this chainsaw. Maybe you can see. 
we're going to see if you got a gas up too. You take it and you toenail it into this lug right here. You leave a little bit out so you can pull it out. You don't want to leave forever. Okay. We want to do it here. And then uh, out here is a good place. Of course, there's a knot in the way. I'm not going to do that. Oh, I guess that's a play in words, isn't it? Anyway. There you go. Oh, anyway. Let me, um, next step, chainsaw. You got a little window in the back here. See it here? That little window tells you how much gas you got in there. Now, it looks like it's almost full. So we're going to try to do this this way. And I'm going to go ahead and start. I won't be talking. Um, part of the time, you'll see what I'm doing. The other part of the time, I, I don't have a camera that wants to follow me around. My wife's busy right now. And we're going to do this. It's getting dark quick, so we're going to try to beat the, the dark. But I wait until later because it has been 9,500 degrees. And if I get out here, I just soaking wet. I can't see. I get water in my eyes with salt. And it's like, then I'm wiping my eyes trying to talk to you, which we're going to do that sometimes. I can't help it. So, uh, hopefully you don't see me picking my nose or something. <laughs> uh, I do scratch my nose a lot because I have allergies. Uh, so don't think I'm always picking my nose. Okay. So, first thing you do is you pump your bowl up, then you choke it, then you pull it. So you hear that pop. Okay, that was my pop right there. Don't know if you heard it, I hope you did. Then I turn it down.
bomb underneath there.
Mushroom. Let me see if I got something to wipe my face off because I feel like Niagara Falls here. Well, you know, I sit there and I think, okay, I'm filming this, I can edit it. But, you know what? I feel like if you edit something a lot of times, it's really not what's happening and I carve in the public a lot and when I'm out there carving by golly Nanny, <laughs> they just got to put up with me you know I tell my corny jokes and I uh, I want to talk a lot you know it's funny when I was younger I thought man that old guy talks a lot and uh, <laughs> I got a running joke with my sister I tell him I'm just a an old fat windbag. <laughs> uh, but hey, hey, that might be good. I have a song to play. It might be good. <laughs> anyway, this is our mushroom. It's not, to me, it's not completely finished. Some people, they would just think it was the greatest thing in the world. Um, I'll go in here and put the tassels in right here. and I might smooth this up a little. Probably not, though. I kind of like that rough look. I'm, I'm a rough artist anyway. Uh, I'm not really refined. I am self-taught. I've had a few people teach me and a few people, uh, I went their class once or twice or something like that. And uh, I have to tell you a story one time about me learning stained glass. That's a real funny one. But today we're not gonna do it, okay? Now, a lot of people get discouraged because they'll carve something, they go, oh man, it doesn't look good or it don't look like yours. You have to understand something. That's why I like being an artist. As an artist, there's artists out there that are phenomenal. I mean, they're just incredible. It's like Mac Michelangelo, you know? One of the greatest artists, you know? And I look at his sculptures and that. And they're in marble, for God's sakes. And I'm going, oh, geez, man. And, and the guy did his first one when he was 14 years old. And uh, different time, different place, you know? And, uh, then there's, there's people that just do the incredible painting. 
And now I oil paint, I do pen and ink, I do everything. And, uh, but then I learned that the neat thing about art is, is if I paint something or if I carve something and, and, so, and it's not quite right to somebody, it doesn't matter. It's what I saw. It's what I was carving. So when you get out there carving and you carve a bear and it's got one ear longer than the other or the eyeballs are twisted sideways or it's got one paw up here like this and the other one's down here like this, you know, and it doesn't quite look like the traditional bear, it doesn't matter. That's what you meant to carve. That is your carving. There's no mistakes, ever. Now, as far as personally, we as artists, we're very critical. So the thing that we do is we sit there and we go, wow, that looks bad. And then the next guy walks up and goes, wow, that looks great. You know, it's funny. I taught this guy one time and um, he, he carved for a few weeks and that. And he'd carve his bears, did a pretty decent shape and everything. But then he'd put the eyeballs on top of the head. I mean, you have an eyebrow, and they go right here on the front underneath your eyebrow. He'd put them on top of the eyebrows. And they'd be looking up into the sky, you know, and I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe it's stargazers, you know? <laughs> Who am I to say? You know, he's the artist. And one day I asked him, I said, why do you put the eyes on top of the head? And uh, he goes, well, that's where you put them. I said, no, I don't. I said, find them right on front. They're in front of the head, you know? He goes, no, they're not, they're right there. And I'm sitting there and, and, and I tried and tried to explain to this guy and he just could not get his, through his head <laughs> that mine were on the front, his was on top. And I thought, okay, it's his bear, he's the artist. And, and it was a little bit ugly to my taste. And that's not nice to say, but I'm gonna say it because I'm pretty frank. And, uh, so I would sit up on the side of the highway and carve, and he goes, I want to go carving with you. And I said, oh, okay. All the bears stargazing, you know? So we go there, and he had a bear about this big. And my bears that size were 500 bucks. And uh, he, he goes, uh, okay, why should I ask? I'm gonna ask 500, and I'm going, okay, that sounds good. Well, we sit there probably two or three hours before looking at them. Nobody said anything. They're just looking at them and said, boy, these are nice and everything. And we sold a few and that. I sold some. He hadn't sold anything yet. And this old lady pulls up in her car. She jumps up and she stands there and she goes running over to this bear in the middle. She goes, oh my gosh, I love this bear. It is so gorgeous. Well, it's a stargazing bear. And she was just so in love with it. And she pays him 500 bucks, he loads it up, and she's gone, and he's, he's, he's excited, he's pumped, man. He's an artist. <laughs> and, and, and all I could think the whole time is, you know what? There's artwork for every single person in this world, for every single kind of taste in this world. And you can sell anything you do. It doesn't matter. Someone's going to love it. So, to say that something's not good, you can't do that. My oil paintings... I look at others and I think, wow, they got all that detail and all that fancy stuff. Whoa, they're refined and all their colors are perfect. You know, I'll paint an oil painting sometime and I'll go to put my blue sky and then I put my trees on, it's got blue in it, and then I go to do something. I'm going, I like blue today. And I'll paint that whole trees and everything, sky, clouds, everything will be blue. Different colors of blue. And that's just the way I'm feeling that day, you know? <laughs> So, so, and nobody can tell me it's not right. It's what I feel that day in my heart. That's what I'm going to put out there. If you like it, fine. If you don't, you know, I'm collecting all this stuff up. So when I die, my kids get to get rid of it. <laughs> I guess that's mean, but anyway, they can do what they want to do. I don't care. It's all going to be left behind. Uh, unless I'll, I sell everything I got for a dime and then I haven't put it in the coffin with me. Then I can take everything with me, right? <laughs> okay. This is it. I'm going to quit talking so much. Uh, this is my mushroom. Don't forget to nail it down. Don't forget your chaps. Don't forget to lock your thumb on that saw. 
it kicked a couple times. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, don't forget your earplugs. Oh, yeah, I can take them out now, can I? Now, these here, they go to the garbage. I've done touched them twice. They've been in my ears, and I don't want an infection tomorrow. So, I will come out and teach you some more carving. We'll try to do this maybe on a daily basis. It's whatever I do each day. That's what I'm filming. Uh, matter of fact, today I'm sitting in the car. We're sitting at Walgreens. And I got 50 million things going through my head. I mean, everything from wanting to lose weight, uh, wanting to think about the way I look or I talk. And I'm sitting there going, you know what? <laughs> I'm not a movie actor. <laughs> I'm just who I am. You know what I mean? And that's what we all should be. So y'all just be who you're going to be and come back. Make sure, this is the part I hate, but I'm going to do it because it's important for me to keep going. Uh, I don't know which one's important. Either you can like it. A lot of people, I think they're doing a like thing. And you need to describe it. And, and I guess that, that's so I keep coming on or something like that. Um... I'm learning this stuff. And then the other one's a bell. And why anybody would ever put that bell on there, I have no idea. Because I got that bell on my, my phone thinking it was such a great idea so I could learn. And it's annoying. And, and the last thing I want to do is wake you up in the morning because I did something at 3 o'clock in the morning because I'm going to film and I'm going to post it at 3 o'clock. You can guarantee that. I mean, my poor parents, I feel sorry for them. Growing up, I never slept, ever. And, and so I begin thinking, I'm working. See, I'm jabbering again. I'm the old windbag. But I'm going to tell you a story and we're going to go. I get jabbering that. I get talking and that. No, no, I'm talking. I just, see, I messed up. I don't even know what I'm doing. I would be working. And while I was working, I'm thinking. There you go. I got it right that time. And my dad and I, we talked about everything. He was like my best buddy. You know, I had a great dad. And, uh. So I'd be thinking about something. It's like, I got to tell dad. So I'd call him up and he'd go, hello, Jerry. And back then we didn't have ID, but he knew the only person going to call in the morning at three or four o'clock in the morning was going to be Jerry. <laughs> oh, bless that man's heart. And, and my poor mama said, it's okay, son. It's okay, son. We love you. And just, just glad to hear you're okay. And it's like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm working. Well, you need to get some sleep. And I said, well, maybe in the next life. <laughs> so anyway, thanks a lot. Take care. This is a simple, easy mushroom. Uh, if you want to try it, get out there and try it. But nail it down. <laughs> Don't chase it around the yard. Catch you later. Bye. Okay, we're going to turn this thing off. Hey, I even got the button on the front. <laughs>